we're back to talk about our favourite parenting stories of the week. Um, I'm Susie, this is Helen and Tara, we're from the Maker Mums team as you know, and uh, we've been having a, a fun week this week actually, there's some things that really made us laugh in the news and we have to start with a picture I think Tara yeah. you have. <laughs> so this is little eight week old Junior and he was born with a full head of hair. Look at that. My daughter doesn't even have that much hair now, and she's five. So. <laughs> and I have to say, my, my, all three of my children were born with lots of hair, and when I was giving birth, literally, one of the midwives said, oh, there's a lot of hair there. <laughs> and I thought, oh, that's probably not an image that, uh, I think that was after my internal, and I was thinking, that's not really an image I want to know. But it made her look so much older. Um, and so people, you know, she looked really grown up and it's really different, but I love that hair. Yeah, that's that is super. People pay a lot of money for that, don't they? <laughs> yeah. they, they can be born with different coloured hair for her don't they? Totally, totally. Had totally. totally. kind of, uh, you know, a brown haired baby we had into a blonde yes. child. <laughs> and, and again, Amma's hair was black and, yeah. it, and it then fell out. Um, but it didn't really, because I think she had so much hair, so the new hair grew back while the other was, the old was, was falling out. And she just went blonde and she's still blonde now. Which is incredible. Not quite sure where that came from, but we'll move on swiftly from that fun. Um, I want to talk about Christmas because, oh my God, we're all, I think everyone is so different at Christmas. There are people who are really, really organised, which is so fantastic, and I admire, <laughs> and I'm so not, I'm the, uh, the last minute kind of to a deadline. Christmas Eve shopper. Well, Christmas week shopper. <laughs> December, <laughs> December it kicks in. But, um, but, but you found a story this week that was particularly interesting. Yeah, I, it was uh, shared on, a, on another um, parenting um, website's forum. It was a mum who's spending £1,000 on each of her three children. And she's also <laughs> getting them a pony. Oh. No, well. a pony. Yes. And I mean, the key issue that the other mums had was actually not so much the money she was spending, but the fact she was bragging about how much oh, she was okay. spending. Um, but um, average seemed to be more like 75 to 100 um, what, do you, what do you guys think? I mean, if you've got the money, shouldn't you be allowed to spend as much as you want? Oh, I don't be my know. view it's on it. Really I'd love to spend one. Much. I don't know. That's really interesting because I think, I I think if I if, if money was no object, then I think I would still be really horrible mum and have a very tight budget. I mean, I literally I'm clearly a bit anal as I'm discovering, and <laughs> I write down a little book how much I've spent on each for three kids, and they're very close in age. And, and therefore I kind of make sure that within, you know, within about 50p, I'm kind of adding it all up. And that's only because I think they would come to me and go, I've got more. I can, at least I can justify. And, you know, sometimes a child will have a big pile and another time a child will have, will have wanted a few big things and I'm not very many. So I have a very split and that way I can say, oh, it's the same. And as they got older, they have a big budget. And, um, and they know, and then they can go and find things and they, they add them all up and they come to me and, you know, I quite like that because it's a money thing. There, were, there was a mum on the forum who said she doesn't spend the same on all her children. Now, they're quite different ages from sort of 17 years to two, so obviously what a 17 year old is different from a two-year-old. But would you, I mean, my mum, when she's buying fa family, you know, presents for all the children in the family, will, it will be to the 50 years. So what do we think about, if you've got children quite close in age, spending a different Never spent the same. Um, oh really? I spent I made when they were very little and very conscious of it, it was always about size. Yeah. So right. as long as they had yeah. the same size yeah. thing, it didn't really <laughs> yeah. matter. But if someone had a really expensive small thing and the other person had an enormous <laughs> thing that the person with the enormous thing now. Oh, best. Yes, definitely. Um, so not it was size and now it's really the things they seem to value. Even the teenagers, uh, the things they remember and they talk about as presents they have any kind of quirky things. So one of them always remembers a, um, I don't even know who gave it to them actually, a, a, um, a present that was a five pound note inside a really difficult puzzle and it took him three days <laughs> to get the five pound note. <laughs> but that's the Christmas present he remembers. And oh, it that's costs, so cool. It well. costs almost nothing. Yeah. So, okay, I like that. I'm going to take that. I really <laughs> like that. I think that's brilliant. And uh, so that's a, that's a really kind of the fun side of things, but you know, we always have to, when we get together and do this, we always have to have our kind of mum shaving corner, and of course this week is no different. So um, Helen, I think we, we found a couple of stories this week, didn't we, and one was around Marina Fogel. That's right, so this is Marina Fogel, who's Ben Fogel's wife, um, and they uh, just had another baby. 
And um, she was talking about how when she talked to other parents about her baby and they asked what kind of birth you had, she had, uh, she said, oh, I had a cesarean birth. And the reaction from the other mums was, oh, that's a shame. And she was quite shocked by that. Um, she called the other mums smug. I'm not sure whether they were being smug or not, but the idea that having a cesarean um, is something to be ashamed of is, is really very strange. Um, and she really felt they were trying to get one over on her and say they had a natural birth, so they were the better mums. I'm not sure whether they really meant that or yeah. not, but obviously Do you think she felt really ashamed by having to have a well, That's interesting, isn't it? Because I'm not sure... It's always how you perceive something. It's always how you hear something. Yes. And I'm not sure necessarily if that's exactly how it was meant. Who knows? I mean, we weren't there. But I wonder if it's more that people think it's it's sort of almost as if you would be disappointed and 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 just sort of a bit sad that you have a cesarean and and you know rather than a kind of real oh dear I don't know it's just it's it's interesting isn't it and I think people genuinely were trying to be nice maybe, maybe they meant rather than sorry you know obviously cesarean's a big surgery yeah and absolutely maybe you've had a difficult recovery for her point might as well. Why is it a shame I've had a healthy baby and I don't care? Oh, well, actually, she thinks she's a baby, you know, it might not have ended well at all if she hadn't had a C section. So yeah, she's great. Uh, she's yeah often that's the way. And it? it's, the, it's, what, that it's way. the result, isn't it? That's the thing. It's kind of the baby at the end of it, however you get there. I think that's, yeah. that's the key. And that's what you have to remember when you're going through that whole thing. And your birth plan doesn't follow what you wrote down. It's like what you've got at the end result and, and the baby that comes out. There was another um, quote that Ben Fogel had said, which was that someone had said they, she's been robbed of the oh. experience. So, I mean, I mean, so it really wasn't. Wow. It really they was saying. They could rob me of my natural birth <laughs> experience any time they like. <laughs> sure. okay, fantastic. But it wasn't the only case. There was another no. interesting story. No, the, uh, the this simple picture, which you think you could pop on Instagram with, without a, a whisper, and it just says breakfast time breakfast time and uh, this is Maria Fowler from Towie and she's put up a mug and a bottle um, her baby is literally days old uh, she had a horrific birth experience she lost um, a lot of blood um, and when people made comments about um, oh are you um, there were sort of things like oh a bottle I see um, I breastfed is there any reason your, your bottle's bleeding and for me the sad thing is that Maria felt she had to explain that she lost a lot of blood and that was why she couldn't bottle feed. But actually she doesn't she shouldn't have to um, say anything other than, yeah, bottle feed, are you maybe getting fed? So it has I mean it rears its head. It does. All and we time. know it's one of those subjects, we know it's one of those issues. We know people feel really passionate about it. And you know, our thing is always each their own. It, it, I guess the idea is can you just, you know, is it better to, to you can feel oh what a shame they're not breastfeeding and, and in fact in in her case she was actually told by the doctor advised by the doctor at that moment in time not forever but at that moment in time she needed to get her strength back she obviously lost a lot of blood so she was advised to actually bottle feed and as you say if perhaps if people could kind of feel it but maybe keep it in and not have to comment yeah, and even it's written in quite a nice way but actually it's still saying the same thing would you feel the need to comment? I mean would you go up to somebody in real life and go I see your bottle feed Oh, I think you know. I think I think it no. I think, <laughs> I think it can happen. I think it can happen. Yeah, unfortunately. Do you know the thing that impresses me about that picture is she's managed to have a cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but is it hot? We don't That's know. Thing. We don't How many times is it been microwaved? <laughs> <laughs> and and talking about how everything gets discussed and and, and turned over, we were also fascinated that people have started talking about the odds on um, on Cheryl being yeah. pregnant at the moment and also a word about uh, maybe Kate Middleton and, and baby number three and people starting to talk about putting vets on. Yeah, I mean, I, I won't say it was the big PP because I'm not entirely sure, but it was a big betting company who said they're not taking vets anymore on Cheryl Cole being pregnant, presumably because they're pretty sure she is, or the, the, the vets have lowered so much. But how do we feel about that? I mean, imagine somebody gets to that stage and they're pregnant and someone's put money on it and either they're not or they lose that baby and it becomes something that some random person can make money from. Pretty shocking, I didn't realise. I think people like Paddy Power will make money for anything they can make money from, basically. Well, I think, I think that 
that's the online ga gaming um, you know, industry that they will, there is an opportunity, I think you can probably bet on most things and, and they're unlikely to, you know, they're not necessarily going to turn that money away. But it is interesting that this is such early days, she hasn't announced anything. It's, it's constant rumours for Cheryl, isn't it? And, and we try now, you know, and be sensitive to it. Um, we're, in this case, we're a bit more interested in the fact that there's a whole industry behind, is she, isn't she? And, and we, you know, we saw that with Jennifer Aniston. Oh, yes. And gosh. Oh, they were wearing a loose fitting t-shirt. Yeah. Oh, I know. Right, bets are on. Absolutely. Yeah, they've gone for a curry and they're definitely going to be having, you know, are they going to breastfeed or bottle feed betting, won't we? It's yes, just, it's yes. But, but when Kate Middleton was, was pregnant, there definitely was that discussion. Will she breastfeed? Will she be able to bottle feed if she needed to? Um, you know, and everything she does will be picked over, which is which is really hard. And, and celebrities, and um, and I guess, yeah, it's just you know. But but it's like sweepstakes in in offices when someone gets pregnant, and people bet on the birth date. Which, fingers crossed, for most people, it's a bit of fun and it's very positive. But we know all too well things can go horribly wrong, and you know, it's just a really difficult one. We'd love to love to kind of perhaps we'll we'll get some discussions going on the forum and on Facebook as well about, about yeah, what people feel about that. It's the line between a bit of fun, isn't it, and a bit of harmless speculation and it's constant, you know, watching of stomachs and um, it must be horrible. Must and be really talking horrible. of stomachs, that brings us <laughs> to our last story which we have to put in. So yeah um, uh, several months ago, maybe over a year ago, we saw a picture um, a a fitness mum had posted and she had she was very very proud of her body and she asked um, what's your excuse and the idea was what's your excuse for not having a stomach like mine she's got three boys there she's very busy and she felt it was really important that she you know that, that you could look after your body now we all know that you know you come in all shape we all come in shape different shapes and sizes and after pregnancy your body can go in all different directions <laughs> and if it's your career and the thing that you do to get back fit then that's fine that's what people do but for the most of us um, that's not what life's about at all what's so interesting is that she's now posted a new picture and she said now this picture everyone's going to go wow she still looks amazing and she does but for her she's got a stomach that isn't what she had before and she's saying, uh-oh, made a bit of a mistake, actually. It's not as easy as, as we thought it, you know, as I thought it could be. Her life's got more complicated. And guess what? The fitness thing, the, the incredible fitness regime, and how she looked when taking photos um, has, has kind of gone out. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, you're looking at someone who eats monster munch. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I would love this second picture, let alone the first one. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've never been to, I went to Iran once in about 1992 for bus. That's, that's about the levels of my fitness, I'm afraid. Um, but hats off to her that yeah, she's exactly come out and said, do you know her. what, yeah. I, I wasn't right. And I think that's real yeah. funny. And let's get more of that. That's what we're going to look for and, uh, and try and try and trumpet, really, yeah. and encourage, because I think that's great. And God, we all make mistakes. And, and we're all doing things and we're all kind of learning along the way. And I think, yeah, less judging is, is the way to go. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>